the story of Laura's story. Um, she was a newlywed, um, devout Christian woman, singing and ministering probably all over the world when her husband was struck with a brain tumor. And um, he had memory loss, a lot of issues. He recovered, but he wasn't quite the same. But through this pain and through this struggle, but through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, she wrote this song, Blessings. And we would share it with you today. We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, prosperity, we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering and all the while you hear each spoken need yet love us to way too much to give us lesser things what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? <laughs> Pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. And we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not enough. But all the while we hear each desperate plea. And long that we have faith to believe. Because what if your blessings come through rainbows? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know that pain reminds his heart that this is not, this is not our home. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if the white greatest disappointments and the aching of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst this world cannot satisfy. What if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise?
Well, I am wearing two different hats today, and I want all the little ones to come up because I've got a really exciting story to share with you about animals. So if you come right up here by me and just... You can sit around here on the floor, and you're going to answer some questions. You can sit or stand or whatever you want to. Do oh. you know that even though I'm an old lady now, that I used to be little like you? And I lived on a farm, and I had all kinds of pets. I'm going to tell you some of them. I had baby birds. Little calves that we fed milk out of a bucket. I had little piglets. I had wild bunnies. I had a bunny named Raggedy Legs that had a hurt leg, and I raised him till he grew up to a big bunny. I had lots of kitty cats. Didn't you have kittens? Uh-uh. I had baby lambs. You have kittens? Good. Kittens, yes, you do. Yes. These two friends are my neighbors, and they have pretty little kitties. And I have ponies. One time I even ran away, and they found me laying up in the barn with the pony. Her name was Frosty. My mommy said, don't ever do that again. And then I've had raccoon pets. And you know what weird pet I've had? Spiders. Out in the field. Do you ever see those big black and yellow spiders? And they have really pretty webs. Well, I walk around the field and look at them, and I don't let anything get them because I like them. They're kind of my pets, and I talk to them. That's silly. Have you ever had a little baby animal pet? Any of? Okay, tell me some. A puppy dog and a goat. Oh, aren't they cute? What do they say? Can you see what a goat says? <laughs> <laughs> okay, some other baby animals. Any? What do you have right now? We already know. Kitties. And you have a gigantic dog named Tiny, don't you? Tiny. Yes, <laughs> Tiny Dog and Chickies. Anybody else? Have you got pets? What you got? A cat. A cat? What do you have? We have chickens at home. Oh, wow. And what do they say? Bok, bok, bok. They do, don't they? That's wonderful. How about you? What? You already done it. I, you already done it. Okay. You? A guinea pig. A guinea pig. Did you hear that? That's a really remarkable animal. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about another animal that I also had for a pet, and it's a possum. Look at this guy. Have you, have you ever seen a possum? Yes. Laying in your yard. Was it alive or dead? Alive. Okay, possums are really, really interesting animals. So let me tell you about them. They, um, they aren't real fierce animals, and but lots of things try to get them. And sometimes we see them run over on the road, and that's kind of sad. But if you would scare a possum out in your field or in your barn, which I have done, they do several things. One thing, they run away as fast as their little legs can go. The second thing, they will hiss. Sssst. Can you guys hiss? Yeah, that's what they do to try to scare you. Woo a hissy possum. The third thing they do is show their teeth. Can you guys show your teeth at me? If I see me, ooh, those are mean teeth. Woo, I'm scared. But you know what the last thing that they do when they're really, really scared? What? Yes, they play dead. They just fall over. And they can't move. And so you think, they're gone. They're not going to hurt me anymore, so I'm safe. But we can learn from a possum. They just play possum and fall out dead. But what do you do when you get mad or scared? Do you ever get mad or scared? What do you do? Do you hiss? No. Cry? And you cry sometimes when you get scared? I do. Or you might yell and say, get away from me, you scary thing. Or you would run to mommy or daddy or your bigger brother or sister. You would step on something if it scares you. Yeah, that's a man. Well, you know what we always need to do when we get scared or even mad or sad? We don't have to act like a possum because we have a, a great, great Savior, and that's Jesus. 
And I want to read you a scripture. In Matthew 11, it's always given me great comfort. Because Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Do you ever feel tired? Got all this homework to do and sports and stuff, you're tired. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we can always go to Jesus. If you have hard times this week at school or you're tired or sad, I want you to think about a possum and think, I'm not going to hiss. I'm not going to fall out dead. I'm just going to run to Jesus and he will help me. So let's pray together, you little ones, okay? Can we pray together? Father, this week, help us to remember about possums. Help us to remember that we need to run to you for our strength and our help, and you'll be right there taking care of us. You are faithful, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't run away now. I've got something more for you to do. Okay? I've got something more for you to do. So, good morning. Welcome. This is wonderful. You know, the parable of the fishes and the loaves, little as much when God is in it. So, we have a full house this morning. Everyone that God wanted here is here, and there's more coming. So, thank you. I'm just moved and excited when I see the smiles. So, I appreciate it so much. Um, we're at Beach Grove Baptist Church in Trafalgar, Indiana. I want to thank my wife, Joanne, the Platinum Beauty. Thank you for singing. I want to thank Tom for playing. Brother Tom, you have a gift. She enjoys working with you, so thank you. Thank you for being a good leader and helping her. Um, I want the children here to, um, to pay attention as we do the welcome. So I have a slide of somebody you might know. So I want someone to answer this question when this slide comes up. Who knows this lady? Does anybody know this lady? Hold your answer, then raise your hand. How many people know this lady? Raise your hand. That's good. Who wants to shout out who that lady is? Annabelle. Annabelle. Hi, Miss Annabelle. How old is Annabelle? 96 years old. That's wonderful. So guess what, children? That's why I want you to hear. Do any of you know Miss Annabelle? Do you know where she lives? Who wants to tell her where Annabelle lives? Miss Stephanie said right next door, Miss Annabelle lives. What color is Annabelle's hair? White hair, yes. Just like my sweet wife, Miss Joanne. Annabelle, I got to visit her yesterday. Miss Susan took me down there yesterday, and some of you ladies have been telling me, go see Miss Annabelle. You got to meet Miss Annabelle. So I had a wonderful visit with her yesterday. And I commented on her hair. I said, Miss Annabelle, your hair looks so nice. She swelled up with pride and said, yes, I get it done every week. Four dollars. Cost me four dollars. I go to Edinburgh and get it done for four dollars. I said, Miss Annabelle, your house is so clean. It smells good. It's clean. She said yes, and she named whoever comes and helps clean her house. And I found out that surrounding Miss Annabelle are some people that love her and care for her and clean her house and make sure she gets where she goes and make sure that she doesn't sit down there alone. People love her. That's what the heart of Jesus does is loves people. I'm getting all kinds of amens and nods all the way from Miss Evansville. I'm going to call her Miss Evansville, but she's Miss Izzy Dawson. Thanks for being here. Her sister Elaine. They bring their smiles. They bring their hearts. That's what God wants us to do when we come into the house. So God can help shape our hearts and make us more alive so we radiate for Jesus. So I'm excited and I believe God is with us. So we saw this picture of Miss Annabelle. Um, Joanne and I are glad we just got back from our trip to North Carolina. So I got another slide. I want you to see if you can identify this lady. So hold, raise your hand if you know who that lady is. Who is that, Miss Susan? That's my wife, yes. I wish we could zoom in a little bit, because she's a beauty, see? 
And she got a big smile, big smile. But we're on the coast of North Carolina, Moorhead City, North Carolina. You see, you put on your coats and march and go to the beach in North Carolina. And um, we had a wonderful week. We went down for my sister's funeral and then had a few days to go down to the coast. I want to say thank you to my friend David Phelps, who's actually a Baptist pastor. We spent four or five days with him in his home, a very special time with a true man of God. I also, um, we're going to fix it and see if we can go with his headset, because Roger told me, he said, Mark, put his headset, he thinks he's a pilot on a, a captain on an airplane, but we're going to see what we can do. All right. You know, one of my friends in Wisconsin watches the video, and when Austin fixed my mic a couple weeks ago, he wanted to know why I stepped off the stage. <laughs> I need somebody with smaller fingers. These five-pound fingers aren't working. All right. You guys didn't notice, this is a beauty queen from Putnam County. No. Which county was it? Putnam. Putnam County, but go ahead. I don't think I know the Oh, she's going <laughs> to fix it. This is my next door neighbor. They came, Miss, Miss Mariah and Mr. Schuyler, and they brought their two children and live across the street. You know, the word of God talks about love your neighbors. We got to know them to love them. So, um, is that right? Yes, another success. <laughs> Roger Craighead, he's my favorite cheerleader now, so I hate to get competition going, but you understand this. Roger is a true cheerleader, and everybody knows that. But he apologized because he said as a cheerleader, he can only kick two inches. Two inches. <laughs> but I love this man. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the clock is ticking. It's, I hope this is not a, a day where there's a pot roast at home, but there are pork chops in the basement. And so I may uh, listen to the Lord and may shorten what I prepared a little bit today. Um, normally I do something funny and talk about something funny and that seems to go over well. But humor, Roger's giving me a little heads up. He, don't, he doesn't want the plane to crash, okay? Right there. All right, thank you. It takes a team. It takes a team. It takes a family. I have a bunch of funny stories. Joanne and I on our trip, I could talk about those and we both laugh. She has a big laugh, big voice, big laugh. But there was something that topped that. There was something that was funny that happened yesterday when I come to see Annabelle. Uh, I knew she lived next door to the church, so I went next door. I went next door, knock, 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 no answer. I'd ring her number. I could hear a dog balking in a TV on, but nobody come to the door. So when Joanne and Tom were practicing, I went back over, opened the door, stuck my head in the living room, and yelled, Annabelle, Annabelle. <laughs> I went to the wrong house. <laughs> that is funny, but I think there's something even more funny. So we've already learned about possums, okay? We learned about possums. But Roger told me a story this week that I thought was so funny that they love animals, all kinds of animals, and they had a cat that had kittens. And I don't know if this cat was like hiding in a dark spot or something, but Roger was slipping them some food, you know. And he got bold and would reach in there and pet the, pet, the, pet the kittens. And he had several kittens in there and he was just feeding them. And one day um, he got brave and stuck his head and looked in and got close enough and he was petting kittens, 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 and two possums. <laughs> Feed and repeat. So he's feeding the possums. Um, but fun is part of life, and learning to laugh at yourself is important. Um, I'm blessed to be here. So children, I did have something more for you to do. I want you to all stand up again. Stand up again. I want you to stand up again. Stand up here with Miss Joanne. Come on, Miss Susan, Miss Luanna. I want to stand up. I'm going to turn around and look at Stephanie. Look at Miss Stephanie, and I want you to say, because I was going to have all these children sing to them, Roger, um, but Miss Stephanie 
it blesses me. I would not walk with the confidence that I have when I stand in front of you if it wasn't for her and Austin. They helped me behind the scenes so much, and I appreciate it. You have a gift, and you're helping make me a better man to bless the people at Beach Grove, so thank you. So we've sung happy birthday, but on one, two, three, get them, everybody to say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Well, thank you so much. All right, one more thing, because we're squeezing it all together. I want to thank all that have worked with the youth and the children. I know, Brandon, you do too. There's others. And I want to pray with you. And I'm going to come down and pray with you before you go to your class. Because this is important. Because Miss Annabelle needs you. You need to know the people like this animal. Miss Llewellyn, we need to stick together. We need to stick together and love people. Joanne and I went to vacation to Wyoming, and the people out there lived to be 90 years old, into their 90s, and I asked them why. Why do people live? Is it medical? Is it diet? Is it high altitude? What, what is it? And they said, because old people in our community are valued, okay? They have a purpose, because the young people look to the old people for wisdom. So remember that today, children and adults, we need to love one another, especially those with white hair, and maybe no hair, okay? <laughs> so Lord Jesus, thank you for our children, each one of them. I pray they go out with a blessing, that they know they are loved. I love your smile, young man. Thank you for coming, thank you for coming. Lord Jesus, I pray you grow in their hearts, that they learn to love you and desire you above all things. I thank you for the teachers that are not going to be in the service today, but giving their time to you. I pray, Lord, your spirit be with all the children and youth of Beach Grove Church. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for coming. I love to hear the, the pastors say, turn in your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. I think Stephanie's got a slide. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. And my main point, my main point in this scripture, I'm going to take this scripture, I'm going to apply it to a question, I'm going to tie it together with a story, and hopefully in this process, I'm going to hopefully take a song about suffering, a lesson about prof um, possums, a scripture from God's word, and a question that I asked a man at the gym on Tuesday morning. And that question is my main point today. And how you answer this question is very important. And that question is, that question is how God's word can help you better deal with your emotions. What a topic, emotions. Most of us, some of us don't even have them, right? We do have them. And we deny them, but they're real. God gives them to us for a purpose. But do we know how to deal with them? Many times we don't. God's word is sufficient. Doctrine, teaching, reproof, and emotions. So now we'll make a connection to our hearts and our emotions, to possums, to music, and the word of God. So let's see what happens. Praise God. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that you continue to have your hand and shepherd this service. I pray you open the hearts of everyone here and everybody in the YouTube world that's looking at this video this week. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit does its work in its time. In your name I pray, amen. So in Ephesians 4, I'm going to read from the screen in the back. So I have my, my, uh, my Bible here also. But in verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of repentance. 
I'm going to turn to the big screen now. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Those words are powerful. Do we need anybody to, to define what bitterness means? Do we need someone to define what wrath is? How about anger? When we lived in South Carolina, we asked one of our young Navy neighbors, do you ever get angry? I was just curious, how often do you get anger, angry? Um, this young mother said, I get angry every day. I was shocked. I don't get angry every day, but I do have anger. And sometimes it's been a problem. Clamor, evil speaking, gossiping, putting other people down. It's not good. Put away from you with all malice. And I could study that from with all malice. I just know that's not good. How about that? That's not good. And the reason this is important is going to tie to this story I'm going to tell you. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted. That's an important word, tender-hearted. Forgiving one another. It's not saying if you need to forgive somebody. It's just saying you'll need to forgive one another. Every married couple, the secret to success, you learn to forgive one another. How about that? You got Jesus and forgiveness, and they go together. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. When we walk in God's grace, we got something to give away. When you don't walk in God's grace, you can't give away grace. Same with love. So I'm going back to the first verse, verse 30. This means a lot to me. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. That's so important. Gr not grieving the Holy Spirit of God. So as we as people go through our week, living our lives, we need to remember these words. I want you to study these and remember them, even memorize them, but grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. How do we do that? If we start doing those things, letting bitterness and wrath and anger and stuff like that take over us, we grieve and quench the Spirit. The Spirit is what gives us life. The Word of God, the Word of God gives us life. It's the Spirit of God that breathes into this Word, and this is this Word that takes us to Jesus, okay? That's kind of a theme in how I preach or how I think. It's about Jesus. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about God's Word, and they're all connected. They're all connected to me. They're all connected to you. They're all connected to we. So that's how I roll. It makes sense to me. So what do possums have to do with this message? I've got three biblical examples. And one of them, Genesis chapter 3. We've got a slide I'm not going to read all the scripture, but you know Adam and Eve, and they messed up in the garden. And what did they do when they found Jesus? God, God was walking in the darkness and called out to them, and what did they do? They hid. What did opossums do? They hide, run away, hide. People do it. So just like Adam and Eve, don't want any more opossums out of the Garden of Eden. How about 1 Samuel 28? Where Saul went to the witch asking for advice because he was afraid. The Philistines were getting ready to move in and attack. He was afraid. He went to the witch. He sinned. He disobeyed. And guess what he did? I believe it's verse 20. And Saul fell straightway all along on the earth. And he was so afraid. You see, when you read the Bible close, you're going to see emotion in there. He was afraid and he fell out just like a possum. My third example, if we go to Matthew 26, 30 through 35, you're going to see a scripture there where Peter foretells Peter's denial of Christ three times. There's another better account, I think, another account in Luke, Luke chapter 22. If we read through that, I'm looking out here. How many people here have never heard of Peter's denial of Christ? I'm in the hands today, raising the hand. Peter denied Christ three times. How many are familiar with that story? Almost everybody here. That's wonderful, knowing God's word. Well, if Peter could deny Christ, do you think Mark Spencer can deny Christ? If Mark Spencer can deny Christ and fail and sin, how about King David? He fell and sinned. We all are weak, every one of us. We need Jesus. Peter 
special man of God, still denied Christ. He was pretending to be something he wasn't. How many people put on a mask to the extent they hide, but someone asks them how they're doing and they don't tell the truth, okay? They're playing possum. It's going to tie to the story I'm going to tell. So again, my main point is, how has God's word helped you deal with your emotions? And we'll add it to it this week. Okay? So, working on messages and how I prepare my messages, I really want God to lead me. And I want to obey him. Even at the last minute, I want to obey him. It's not like I prepare something weeks ahead or a month ahead and then come in. So I'm, I, this week I waited. I waited till Friday to sit down at the computer and start typing. But I kept asking the Lord, what do the people at Beach Grove need this week? Thank you, Izzy. I like that nod. That's helpful. Thank you. What do the people need? I want it fresh. So I go to the gym. You guys know that I work out and go to the gym. I go to the gym, and I ask a friend of mine a question. And that's the question I asked him. He's a big weightlifting guy. I mean, big, strong muscles. I mean, he could do a commercial for the uh, fitness magazines. He's in his early 50s. He's a Christian man. He has a good testimony. So I felt comfortable asking him this question. But I do ask some hard questions to total strangers. I don't have to know you well to try to get to know you well. I will ask questions. So I asked him. He says, how you doing, all this stuff. We catch up. I hadn't seen you last week. I was in North Carolina. But I said, how has God's word helped you deal with your emotions this week? And he told me this amazing story that his wife went to a ladies' conference at their church. And she came home afterwards just raving about the speaker and how wonderful he was and she goes on just having a, just talking about how great the lesson was and all the time he was feeling smaller and smaller and more insecure and insecure to the point that his feelings were hurt he maybe thought he wasn't man enough and so he played possum he hid from his wife she said what's wrong Nothing, nothing. Everything's fine. That goes on. That evening, that night, he didn't sleep well. He's upset. He's hurt. The next morning, he's driving her by her work to drop her off at work, and he's, he didn't talk to her. So what's the matter? What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. And so then he opens up. So said, well, when you came home last night, you were talking about that man so much, it hurt my feelings. She starts bawling. She starts bawling. She didn't want to hurt her husband. But there's some good come out of that, okay? Because the next thing he quoted was this verse. Let's put it back up there, Stephanie. Ephesians 4. Let's go to Ephesians 4. There was one word. There's just one word in this scripture that convicted him. And he knew he was not right with God until this one word was addressed and he obeyed this one word. So let's go to Ephesians 4. 32, 32. She's going to find it. This one word. Look in verse 32. That one word is in 32. What do you think that word was? Think through it. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. That's a great verse to memorize. The one word was tender hearted. He knew he wasn't tender-hearted to his wife. He knew he wasn't showing her grace, mercy, and love of God. He knew he was not being the man of God that he was called to be. He confessed his sin 
running away and hiding from his wife. She's crying. Then what she learns is how tender her husband's heart really is. Men have tender hearts. Sometimes we don't show it well, but we do. They made up good before she went to work. Now he has a testimony. And folks here at Beach Grove Church, you get blessed by this man's story, this man's testimony, and this scripture. That's how all this came about. The other part of this story I want to tell is, has to do with the song. So Joanne and I have lived, we moved 10 times in 10 years. Being married to an engineer, it's a construction engineer. You move and travel and build things. We lived all over the southeast. One of the towns we lived in, sweetheart, was Spartanburg, South Carolina. We lived right out in the suburbs. I worked downtown. It's just a peaceful little town, Spartanburg, South Carolina. I could ask you how many of you have driven through Spartanburg, and probably half of you know where Spartanburg is, just below Asheville on the way to Charleston. Laura Story was from Spartanburg. Yes, she's from the town we lived in that wrote that song, Blessing. Laura Story also went to Columbia Bible College in Columbia, South Carolina, where our dear friends Rick and Connie Hartman went. Let's see if we got a picture of Rick and Connie. I think we've got one. Rick and Connie Hartman. She's going to pull it up. Like I told you, Miss Stephanie and Mr. Austin, they are taking care of me well. So thank you. That's Rick and Connie. Uh, on our 25th anniversary, they came down to Myrtle Beach and spent the weekend with us. Uh, they were in our small group in Richmond, Virginia. Um, we love both of those people. They're dear people to us. Um, there's going to be some tears, sweetheart. I'll cry with you. But this is part of the story. But this is part of a story that gives God the glory. And that's what he wants all of us to do, live our lives giving God the glory. In 2014, Rick was diagnosed with a brain tumor, just like Laura Story's husband, okay? Rick went to Comey Bible College in 1983. That's when they went down there, right after we left Richmond, Virginia, where we were together with them. Um, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor in May, and in June, they were driving, they were driving to Columbia, and they heard a song on the radio, and it was Laura Story's song, Blessings. See how it gets connected? You can't underestimate God's plan, God's leading, how God puts things together. So yesterday when I was working on my sermon, I look at a scripture that we're going to come to, Romans 8.28, all things work together for good. Beside that note in my Bible was a date, 12.31.15, Rick Hartman. That was three weeks before Rick died. Rick did not make it through the brain tumor. But that last 20 months that he lived, he spent time with God. And I had the privilege of calling him and talking to him often about what God was speaking to him. And Rick told me if he could choose no cancer and no brain tumor and live, and trade that for the gift of God's presence and God's nearness and God's love over those 20 months, he would choose cancer. He would rather die than give up that relationship that he had with God. A few weeks ago, we studied Psalm 19, and we got down in verse 11. It talked about the great reward, the great reward. This is the great reward. Heaven is a reward. Walking with Jesus every day is a reward. We need to desire that great reward, just like Rick Hartman. There are many interesting things that tie to that story. I was scheduled for an international business trip to travel when Rick died. At the same time, they wanted me to speak at his funeral. Lily had all the tickets bought and everything for me to go, and I came down with severe vertigo. I couldn't even walk. How God works in all those situations. I had two places I wanted to be 
and God put me in bed. I had to learn to thank God for that. I had to thank God in all things, even in our sickness. So as we walk, walk through this, um, I want to go to some scriptures. I want to go to some scriptures. Psalm 119, verse 11. Brother Don has spoke this very many, many times, isn't it, Don? Psalm 119, verse 11. He can quote it. He shared it with me many times. Why don't y'all read it with me today? How about it? Come on, Joanne. Help me get everybody to read it. Let's say, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. It's a powerful verse. God's word spoke truth. To this man's feelings, David, Rick Hartman, and my friend at the gym, God's word restored this man's marriage. God's word did not return void. Isaiah 55, 11. It goes, so shall my word be which go forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty without acknowledging what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Joanne has quoted that verse many, many times. We need God's word, and he speaks into our emotions. Believe me, we have emotions. God gave us emotions. Some people said, don't ever trust your emotions, but I know so many people that they didn't come to the cross if it wasn't for their broken heart and contrite spirit. The Lord inhabits that. The Lord inhabits that. Don't run away from it, but take it to the word. Take it to the Lord. Be honest with God, and he will show you great things. Romans 8, 28. This verse is a very important verse. We walk through trials and troubles, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. As we bring this plane in for a landing with all passengers on board, okay? With all passengers on board. Um, I want to show back to that picture of Rick Hartman's family. What he left behind is his family. Joanne, I called Connie yesterday. It's been six years. And her testimony for God was strong. Let's see. I'd have to look and see where Connie. Connie's in the middle with this. Rick's with the hat. That's what cancer does to you. I don't have any hair either. But Connie was strong, still testifying to God's goodness. And then she broke down and cried. It's okay to cry. Jesus wept. She had a good cry to thank me for calling her. So it was special. It was a special time. This hat, sometimes churches set out props. What does this hat mean? What do you think this hat has to mean? I met Mr. Ray earlier as a Wake Forest graduate. I bet you he can tell me where this hat is from. Where is this hat from? NC State. Rivals down in what they call the back of road, basketball. I went to NC State and studied engineering. Six months before Rick died, we met at a mall in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Nash County, that's where Ray's from. Nash County, am I right? That's right. We went shopping. I believe it's called Terrytown Mall. See, that's the only mall in eastern North Carolina when I was a boy. The only mall. Rick picked this hat out. I let him choose it. I wanted an NC State hat. This hat is special to me. I'm going to show you some dirt. I won't wash this one. I still got all the dirt on it. But that's from Rick. 
We need to remember the living and the dead and honor them. So Connie, all you folks, friends of Laura's story, all you folks in Columbia, South Carolina that might be watching this video, thank you. Laura and Martin, thank you for blessing us up here in Indiana. I would like to have a little bit of an invitation. You know, when I'm here, the, in, the altar is always open. But we're going to do a little bit of an invitation song that Tom's picked out. And as you sit there, just ask yourself, have you played possum? Have you always been tenderhearted? Do you need to be closer to Jesus? Just meditate on that and as, as Tom plays. Thank you. You know, bringing the children down was a little different. And since Joanne and I have been here, we'd like to end with a happy song. So, Tom, do we have a happy song? Yeah. Do we have any food in the house? I didn't eat, I didn't eat but some celery for breakfast. So <laughs> what do we have for supper or lunch? or what, what are we getting ready to do, Roger? Pork chops. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So, Joanne, come on up. I think... I think we're going to have a chance to um, sing a happy song, and then lunch will be served in the basement. So thank you. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. on the mountain Jesus Christ is born Shepherds kept their watching or wandering flock by night Behold from out to heaven there shone a holy light I Tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born in the time of David some said he was a king and if a child is true born the Lord will hear him sing and go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. He made me a watchman upon the city wall. And if I am a Christian, I am the least of all. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. So did they pray up here or pray downstairs for the food? Go for both places, I bet. So let's pray and we'll go out. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for filling us, giving us a word today, giving us love, giving us a direction, giving us vision, now giving us food. So I pray that uh, we'll continue to fellowship with you, with each other, 
and with the food you provided. In your name I pray, amen.